Daddy man. It is Friday night. I am your favorite daddy man in the kitchen. And it would not be a Friday night if I wasn't having camera difficulties. <laughs> and it can only mean one thing. It is time, once again, for Mutant Cafe and all its camera problems. Cheers and happy Friday night and happy Valentine's Day to you all. All right. Now we're all set. Let's get going. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Valentine's Day. It is also the second week of Daddy Man Loves Month, and that means tonight we are celebrating the man that I could not live without, Hugs. And the way we're celebrating tonight is we are making a very, very delicious Italian dish for my Italian husband, Pasta Pudinesca. And then after this, we are going to jump on the television and watch Hulk's absolute favorite horror movie that you just saw, Scream. So, this is a super, super simple recipe, and there's not a lot involved, and there's not a lot of ingredients, but we are going to start the way we always start, by covering those ingredients. First things first, you've got one pound of pasta. I am using pasta pudinesca. It is a thicker spaghetti. It's actually got a little tiny hole in the center. So when it puffs up, it's got that hole and it collects all that sauce inside the pasta. It's really good. If you like spaghetti, go ahead and try this. It's really, really good. We're also gonna use a couple cloves of garlic. We're gonna use several um, anchovy fillet, fillets, excuse me. Um, just so we, to cover this before we keep going, all of these ingredients are suggestions. You can use as much or as little of these ingredients as you want. These are just a baseline. So if you like the ingredient, use more. If you don't like the ingredient, use a little less. But trust me with those anchovies, you are not gonna taste them. They give it a nice little undertone. You're not gonna quite know what it is. It's not fishy, but it makes it delicious. We're also going to use a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, again, more or less if you want it um, spicy. We are uh, we covered the six anchovies. We are going to use 28 ounces of whole peeled tomatoes, and these are canned. Three tablespoons of capers, uh, which are in the refrigerator, and I will grab those. This is going to be one of those nights. Three quarter cups of Kalamata olives, one small bunch of parsley, and one half cup of Parmesan cheese. We're also going to use a little salt and pepper. Okay, let me grab those capers, <laughs> and then we'll get going. And here are the capers. All right, so let's get some of this stuff out of the way. <laughs> let's get going. First things first, we're going to get these ingredients prepared. There's not a lot to prepare. You'll notice everything is not even measured out tonight. It's so simple that why bother measuring it out? We're going to do it all together. Um, as we are cooking along. So we need to get these garlic cloves crushed up and peeled. You've seen me do this several times. I'm gonna go, these are a little smaller, so I'm gonna go for, crush them. Don't worry about it, because we are gonna mince these so they can be as crushed as you need. Those peels should come right off if your garlic is fresh, which of course you would like your garlic to be fresh. Pasta Pudinesca. It is delicious. It is simple. It's all in one pan. All these flavors go so well together. They're all traditional Italian flavors, just like my Italian husband. All right, so we are going to dice this up pretty small. You don't need to go too small, <clears throat> but you definitely don't want to bite down into a big piece of garlic. You should, by the way, have a big old can of salted water going by now, because what's gonna happen is we are gonna throw that pasta in the water, and the seven minutes that it uh, takes to make this bucatini, which is about one minute under the package instructions, uh, that's all it's gonna take to make the sauce. So make sure you got that water 
boil it up because you don't want to start the pasta sauce and cook it uh, too much before that pasta is ready. The only other thing we need to do is we need to cut these Kalamata olives. I'm draining them. I use about this whole jar. And we're just going to dice those up as well. These, I'm just going to do a real rough cut. I'm not going to go too small on this. Some of these I almost would be halved. Okay. There we go. We're going to leave that parsley for the very end. Okay. And then I think when we're ready, I'm just going to throw a couple more of these on the board. So that's it for the chopping until we get to the parsley at the very, very end. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get pasta opened up. Make sure you got your pan going here pretty high. At least for the beginning, we can always turn it down. Let's get this pasta in the pot. Again, put a salted water. Definitely want salted water here. There we go. Because you want the salt to imbue the pasta. All right. So we got that pasta water boiling. Give it a nice stir here. Up nice and high. Get that lid on. That lid always helps boil a little faster. All right, so we're going to go nice and slow. I said there's not much involved in this dish. There. All right, first things first, we're going to get the olive oil in the pan. And like I said, I don't even have this stuff measured out. Honestly, once you've had this once or twice, you'll get a taste for what you like in it and what you don't like in it, and you don't even need directions. All right, so we've got that olive oil heating up. We've got our pasta going. Let's talk about pasta puttanesca. Exactly what is pasta puttanesca? Puttanesca, believe it or not, it is Valentine's Day. I don't know if this is appropriate or not. It seems sort of appropriate. Pasta puttanesca. Puttanesca translates in Italian to Lady of the Night or Lady of the Evening. <laughs> and there is an interesting story. This pasta originates in Naples, Italy. Um, it's about 100 years old, according to legend. Um, this uh, Naples is, for those of you not... Uh, uh, familiar with geography, or those of you who are familiar with geography, Naples is a port city in Italy. Uh, it's a coastal city, so it has uh, ships coming in and out, uh, which means they're, uh, you know, importing, exporting, lots of ships coming in. Along with ships come sailors. Along with sailors, back then, comes prostitutes, or ladies of the evening. And, um, this was a very popular dish amongst the ladies of the evening. Now, there's two different theories on why this is popular. One, most ladies of the evening uh, may not have had permanent residence, so to speak, or were renting rooms for the evening. Typically, when you're renting a room for the evening back then, it would have a hot plate, and so you would have your own pan, and you would want a dish where everything came in cans or jars. So nothing had to be refrigerated, nothing had to be cut fresh per se. You could grab garlic at the market, like or down the street or whatever. So um, that was one theory on why it was very popular with the ladies of the evening. The other theory is it's unbelievably fragrant. Every single thing we're about to throw in this pan smells amazing, and the second it hits the pan, it smells incredible. So those sailors are probably hungry for more than one thing, food being one of them. Uh, and when they smell that smell and know what's going on in that room, they're obviously going to go where there's delicious food coming out of the window, along with the other thing that they may be looking for. So, pasta puttanesca, y'all. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's where this dish comes from. Again, what else would you expect from Mutant Cafe? <laughs> so, we've got our pan nice and heated. I'm going to give this pasta a nice stir. Don't let it get all clumped up. When you first throw it in there, you know, it kind of hits. So I am now, it's now boiling very rapidly. So I'm going to give that timer seven minutes and go. So that means we start the dish. We got seven minutes. First things first, we are going to add 
the garlic. And I'm going to grab a spoon again. And instantly, just like I said, you can smell that garlic. Make sure you've got a good amount of oil going on in there. Just over a little bit. Man, yeah, I can smell that garlic. Alright, so we are then next going to go with crushed red peppers. I don't know why I'm looking at this. I've made it a million times. I don't need to read this. So, you know, a good amount of crushed red peppers. And again, instantly, you can smell the garlic and the red peppers. Phenomenal. We're just going to give that a couple minutes. Don't burn your garlic. Burnt garlic is not a happy taste. This is one of Pub's absolute favorite dishes. It's so simple. It's so easy. It's amazing as pasta. It's really good on chicken, really good on fish. The fun thing is you can jar this up in your refrigerator for like two weeks, make a nice bath, put it in your refrigerator, and you can then just throw some pasta and this sauce in the microwave and you're good to go. Alright, next we're going to do the anchovies. Again, a lot of people freak out about anchovies. I get it. Anchovies are a little fishy and a little funky. But in this dish, because we are cooking it in the oil, you're really not going to taste these anchovies. It's going to have one of those umami kind of tastes, which is a, a Japanese word for, it's, a, it's another sense in Japan. Like it's, it's one of the, it's a sixth sense according to um, Japanese cooking. It's indescribable, but you can taste it in the back of your mouth. Um, I'm putting almost this entire pan in, and I'm even putting a little bit of the oil in. Because what you're going to do here, and I do that every time, trust me, never stewed you wrong yet. That hot oil, these are going to completely disintegrate. These sardines are tiny little fish. And they've been cut in half so they can get the um, the bones out. So because they're so wafer thin, they're already dissolving. Look at that. I put a big hunk in there and you can barely see any um, like sardines anymore. But man, does it smell good. Oh, a little fishy right now in the smell, but it's dissolving down with everything else. And you are never going to taste that. Now you're going to taste something. Trust me, you're not going to taste an nasty fish taste. I wouldn't steer you wrong on that. Okay? Just kind of smash it up with your, uh, with your wooden spoon. Don't forget, 8 o'clock, we are going to tweet along the screen. Be original. Now, Campbell, let me get this pasta water boiling over. Get that lid. Once it's boiling, you can take that lid off. Keep it from boiling over. We only got about three and a half minutes. So, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get these tomatoes in. All right? And that is full of tomatoes, and you want all that juice in there. Okay? Don't miss a drop. Okay? And you're going to crush those tomatoes up. Don't pulverize them, leave a few little chunks. Start stirring it up. Smells incredible. You can't have Italian without pasta or without uh, tomatoes, right? I mean, you can, but most of the time. Let's get that stirred around. Mm -hmm. it smells so good. Hope you all are cooking along with me tonight because this is a good one. This is a great Valentine's dish. Or if you know, a dish where you just want it ready quick, you want to spend time with your guests, spend time with your Valentine, spend time with your birthday partner, whoever you got going on, this is the dish to do, because you do not have to pay attention to this. Alright, so we are going to just let this start simmering a little bit, heat just up a little more. Scream is coming up next. How amazing is Scream? I, mean, I was writing down who was in Scream. Check this out. This is not even everybody. You've got 
Drew Barrymore, you've got now Campbell, uh, Rose McGowan, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, Matthew Lillard, Jamie Kennedy, Liv Schriever, Skeet Ulrich, uh, and then that's just not even, that's not everyone that's in this movie. Amazing movie. It's definitely dictated where horror went in the early 2000s. I'm not even going to talk about Scream because you've heard people talk about Scream to death. It's an amazing movie. That opening scene, duh. Y'all know Drew Barrymore was actually supposed to be the Nev Campbell role. It was in production for so long, pre-production for so long. She started to feel like she got a little too old. So she said, hey, throw me in that first role. Everyone will be shocked that I'm killed right off the bat. Super smart of her. She's getting points off the bat. She knows what she's doing. All right, so we're cooking this down a little bit. It smells amazing. Next, we're going to go with the Kalamata olives. And we're going to go with the capers. I'm going to drain these capers in my hands. You know how much I like to use nice, clean hands. I got one big, giant handful right in there. I mean, I might even go a little bit more. I like the capers. They got a nice, salty snap to them. Not quite pickled. And then I kind of just start looking. What is missing in here? What does it look like there's too much of? Or excuse, a little bit more of, a little bit less of. Seems to be a little less Kalamata olives than I would probably like. So I'm just going to throw a couple more on the board. Chop it up a little bit. Nothing wrong with the whole Kalamata olive. Don't worry about it. And by the way, these have, do not have the pits, obviously. You got the ones with the pits. You got a little extra work to do. There you go. The pasta should be done at this point. Let's check that out. Give us a stir. We want this to cook down for a couple minutes before we throw that pasta in. So we're going to check that out. It's a nice, thick sauce already. Tons of flavor going on. It smells amazing. Let's check that pasta out. Best way to check the pasta, give it a try. That's perfect. You want just a touch under that. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to pull it up out of the water to give it a second to drain. Okay. Now you notice I have measuring cups and stuff. I didn't even use them. There's no point. This is a super, super flexible meal. I'm going to get some pepper in there. I don't think I'm going to do any salt because we got the capers, we've got the salted pasta. I don't think you need any salt. If you see any big giant chunks of tomatoes, get them cut down. Now, before I forget, we are going to watch Scream. After Scream, I am highly suggesting Scream will be over at 9.50, is that right? Yeah, 9.50 Eastern Time. At 10 o'clock Eastern Time, and I wrote this down because I want to make sure I get it exactly right, you are going to want to jump on mutantfam.com, M-U-T-A-N-F-A-M.com, slash marathon. I don't know if you've been checking it out all day today, starting at midnight, all Valentine's Day. They have had a marathon going on of original horror content. It's been an amazing day. There has been some great stuff. There was just a short film on called Fetish, I want to say, and it was uh, amazing. It was distracting me, hence the camera problems, because it was so good. Um, so go on mutantfam.com slash marathon, 10 o'clock Eastern time, and they are premiering the director's cut of 33 Days Dead. No. Yeah. 33. Yeah. Three Days Dead. Excuse me. Three Days Dead. That's right. It didn't sound right. Three. T-H-R. Three, three. Days Dead. Three Days Dead. And that is a film by John M. Ware. You may be familiar with him. J-O-H-N-M-W-A-R-E. That is his at. At J-O-H-N-W. Uh, M, excuse me, J-O-H-N-M-W-A-R-E, John M. Ware. It is three days dead. They are premiering the director's cut of that film at 10 o'clock. 
It is a hilarious and awesome uh, independent zombie film. It's so much fun. 10 o'clock, the mutant fam and the horror fam is going to be tweeting that live. It is only available on mutantfam.com slash marathon. So make sure you check that out. It is amazing. If you've been checking it out all day, it's dark right now because they uh, threw it over to me, which is I'm so grateful for. And that movie is going to be a ton of fun. So after screen, Make sure you get another cocktail. John actually threw a personal thing out. Every time his hair changes or his shirt changes, and I'm guessing maybe it shouldn't change, he has uh, challenged you to take a drink or a puff, depending on if you're in a Colorado state or a Texas state. And um, I'm up for that challenge, John. So thank you for that. That's going to make it all the more fun. Let's grab that pasta. We are not only going to grab the pasta, but this is a little trick. You're going to grab about a cup, a uh, dry cup or a wet cup, whichever, they are slightly different, but it's not going to matter. Grab a cup of that pasta water, and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay. There's our pasta water. And here's our pasta, and this is going to go right in the pan. Ooh, nice and hot. Now, the reason we cooked this about a minute or two under what the instructions call for. Because what's gonna happen now that this is in the sauce and now that that pasta is craving just a little bit more liquid to get as full and bulky as it possibly can, it's gonna start sucking up the um, sauce because it's not in a hot boiling water anymore. It's looking to grow just a touch more. So it's gonna start pulling in that sauce. This is the trick. If you go to an Italian restaurant and they give you a big plate and you see all that yellow pasta on that plate and it's got a bunch of sauce in the center, it's not done right because that sauce is dry and kind of thin. Now the pasta is pulling in the sauce, so every bite of that pasta is going to have that delicious sauce inside of it, as well as the bucatini, which I said has a tiny little hole running down the strand of it. It's spaghetti, but it's a little thicker to allow for a tiny little hole right down the center to suck up some of that sauce. And the reason we grabbed this is because this is nice, starchy water. Pasta has a lot of starch in it, and that starch comes out when you cook it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there, and that's just gonna enrich and thicken up that sauce just a little bit. So as the pasta cooks in this pan, the sauce is getting nice and thick. Pasta is starting to suck it up. Oh, man, I can't wait to get this in a bowl. This is so good, you guys. This is so good. Now, that pasta that I was chewing on in there. Last things last, all we need to do here is we're going to grab a tiny little bit of parsley. Okay. This side of the way. Right, again. Don't forget, we have two more episodes of Daddy Man Loves. Next week is Daddy Man Loves Shudder, and who doesn't? Because Shudder is a horror lover's absolute best friend. It came around about, oh, they just had a birthday, so I think it was two years ago. Um, and man, they have changed the horror world forever. They have exclusives, like the movie we're watching next week. We are doing a roasted pork loin with some roasted potatoes, um, and the movie we're doing is Mandy, which is a Shudder exclusive. And those of you who have seen Mandy may know where I'm going with that roasted pork loin. It's gross, I know, but it'll be after Valentine's Day, so we don't need to be all sentimental, sentimental and cute anymore. So we are doing Daddy Man Loves Shudder. How can you not? And if you like Italian classics, it's on there. If you like a uh, giallo, um, yeah, it's on there. If you like comedies, uh, One Cut of the Dead, it is on there. If you like horror that's a little more independent, queer horror, uh, Stranger by the Lake, it's on there. If you like new independent things that you can't see anywhere else, like Bliss, it's on there. If you like horror, check it out. Joe Bob Briggs, obviously, The Last Drive and Darcy are last week's Daddy Man Loves. It's on there. 
Shutter has it. If you're looking for it, chances are Shutter probably has it. They don't have everything. They do rotate through. They still have a budget. They're growing. So get a subscription. Check out our show next week for a roasted pork loin, and that is going to be a full episode. We are going to be cooking right down to the last minute, like last or this week. And then the final week, we are doing Shutter Shutter Loves. Daddy Man Loves, my absolute favorite male horror actor. He has literally been in, I looked it up because I knew it was a lot, but then I started counting, and I'm like, holy crap, like 15, 20 different horror movies, including one of his very first movies, Friday the 13th Part 1, Daddy Man Loves, Kevin Bacon, that's right, and we are making a delicious beef lentil soup that's got bacon in it. It's something you're not going to want to miss. It's a soup that's going to go in your repertoire, and you're going to cook it all the time. All right, so we're just cooking this for another minute, probably. Just kind of stirring it around, getting that sauce nice and coated in there. As you can see, it's not a heavy sauce. It's just kind of pinking up that pasta. That's all you want. Excuse me, I have the hiccups today. All right. And then we have big, 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 big plans for March. I'm not going to spoil them yet. I've been kind of teasing them. I got another teaser coming out, but they are big plans. They're going to be so much fun. I think you're really going to like March. March is kind of, you know, meh month. It's still winter. And we wish it wasn't. It's not quite spring. But I got a way that's going to make Fridays in March super, super fun. It's a genre of horror that I'm sort of familiar with. But I'm going to become way more familiar with for a lot of different reasons. And you'll see. All right. That's it. Like, that is literally it. We're done. I'm going to get a bowl. Always do. I get my tongs as I always do. That. It's a short one this week, you guys, but it's Valentine's Day, and I figure you have better things to do than hanging around the kitchen. All right? We're just gonna go with the pasta first. Don't worry about the toppings. All right? Get some nice big chunks of pasta. Here's a little tip. Get it in there and then give it a twist. Kind of makes it pretty. Okay, maybe just a touch more. I'm gonna give you a real big full bowl. All right. There's your pasta. And then what you're gonna do, grab a spoon, pull some of this pasta off to the side, get some of that sauce in there. Okay. We're gonna top that off with this delicious sauce. Oh, look at that. All oh, those beautiful olives, capers. Calamat olives are a little salty, just like the capers. They have a darker, richer taste than a normal black olive. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Man, 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 man. Oh, does that look good? And then we're just going to... Hit that with a little bit of grated parmesan. That is perfect. A perfect Valentine's Day or any day dinner. But this is my Valentine's Day dinner for the man of my dreams, Hubs. It's so good. Look at that. Let's make sure you can see that. Oh, steaming good. Giant bowl of pasta, exactly what you need on this cold Valentine's Day. It's snowy here. It's probably snowing where you are. That is it. That is the dish. I told you it was going to be quick tonight. You now have about a half an hour, maybe about 28 minutes, 27 minutes before we start live tweeting Scream. If you're not going to live tweet Scream, please jump over to mutantfam.com slash marathon. They're going to pick back up at 9 o'clock as well, or excuse me, 8 o'clock as well, so 8 o'clock Eastern time as well. So one or the other, live tweet, scream with us, go over to mutantfam.com slash marathon, check out what they've got going on. For sure, check out mutantfam.com slash marathon for three days dead, John M. Ware's awesome 
zombie movie. That's going to be a good time. I know you're jonesing for a good tweet along with the mutant family because Joe Bob insists on not announcing when he's coming back. This is the night to do it. Please enjoy that pasta. Please have a cocktail on Daddy Man and have an amazing Valentine's Day. I love y'all. Enjoy the pasta. Thank you guys for joining me again. I will see you next week at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We are doing a roasted pork loin. It's stuffed. that's going to be amazing. And nice roasted potatoes. And then at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we are going to be watching um, the amazing Mandy, a Shudder exclusive. Daddy Man loves Shudder next week. I will see you then. Thank you guys so much again for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Enjoy that pasta.